Hello, welcome to another watercolor pencil video. Have you ever noticed those hard lines that can randomly appear when you use watercolor pencils? Let me show you how to create hard watercolor pencil lines intentionally and use them as part of your artwork. For this demonstration, I draw in the stems first as a guideline and then I add three flower buds. I add all buds with very light pressure just to get some pigment down. Every pencil line I add to the paper follows the same direction, from the outer top point of the flower bud to the connection point with the stem. This is a precaution, because even if you are as careful and intentional as you can be, sometimes a random line might still remain on the paper after you activated the pencils. When that line follows the growth pattern of the flower, it will blend straight in. If that line follows the wrong direction, it will distract the eye. As humans, we have the ability to see and recognize and point out those visual distractions very easy, and they are therefore impossible to ignore. In order to demonstrate how to use the hard watercolor pencil lines, I need to sharpen my pencil to a pointy tip. Pushing a little harder with a pencil, I then add lines following the growth pattern of the paddle. The top bud will have soft lines, the middle bud will have more moderate lines and the bud at the bottom will have strong lines. When I activate the watercolor pencil flower buds, I start with the lightest area at the tip. Some of the pigment will soak up in the brush and will be transported by the brush. I want the extra pigment to be transported to the bottom of the bud. The more you scrub with the brush when activating the watercolor pencil, the more pigment will be picked up off of the paper. The pencil lines will dissolve but not always completely. The stronger watercolor pencil lines are harder to dissolve and some will remain visible. It is those lines that I will use in today's tulip painting. Creating dark watercolor pencil lines can be easier or harder, depending on the brand of watercolor pencils you use. The lead in some pencils is simply harder than with other brands and some watercolor pencils just melt easier when activated with water. If you want to know more, check out my beginner's guide for watercolor pencils. I will link it in the top right corner for you. I finish up the quick flower by adding some green details with a watercolor pencil, which I will not activate. As you can see, once the flower is dry, the stronger watercolor lines remain visible in the final artwork, adding character and structure to the piece. Recently, I saw this beautiful tulip in a public park and the unusual line pattern really inspired me to pull out my watercolor pencils and start painting. Let's begin by picking the colors for this painting. I really like to prepare a color card, which helps me to see how colors will look when they are layered. Doing this will make painting so much easier as you know exactly what to expect. I ended up picking a lighter violet color and a darker one. For the greens, I also chose a lighter one and a darker tone. Using only this limited amount of pencils makes it easier to create a cohesive painting. 
As you add water to the pigment, there is actually a very wide range of colors you can create from only those pencils. Keep in mind that the white paper is also a color that should be used when painting with watercolor pencils. In addition, I chose a blue tone, which I will use for details at the very end. As you will see, I will choose not to activate it with water, but instead use it dry. Let's start painting. For this layer, I'm only using the lighter purple color. I leave out any white highlights and leave a gap to the actual pencil line. The gap is easier to close with a brush once I activate the pencil. All the watercolor pencil lines and later brush strokes follow the actual direction of the lines on the tulip. This layer of color will establish the base that I can build on any future layer. If you are having trouble seeing the highlights or defining the light and dark areas, try adding a black and white filter. This can really help, but with some reference photos, it can also be deceiving. I always double check with a colored reference photo and use common sense when using this tool. Once I added all the watercolor pencil for the first layer, it is time to activate it, one area at a time. Adding all the pencil for the first layer at once before activating it makes it easier to get an even result. The watercolor pencil looks very different once it is activated. When you finish one petal at a time, it can be hard to tell how much pigment you used and recreate the result. This is not an issue with the next layers, but getting the first layer, the underwash even, is important and will make it easier to add the next layers. I also add the first layer of green to the stem. I decided against leaving a white highlight in the center, as the tulip would be pretty intense in color, with little white space. I would rather create a stem that looks slightly too much in the shade, than create one that is too light, taking attention away from the flower. Once the first layer is completely dry, I can continue with the same light purple watercolor pencil. It is important that the paper is completely dry, as the pencil can rip the paper if it is wet or even damp. In this layer, I intensify colors with the same light purple watercolor pencil. From the color card I made earlier, I know which colors I am mixing when I use two layers of the same watercolor pencil for this tulip. Without the color card, I probably would have never guessed the color right that I get from layering this pencil. I would probably have used a darker pencil which would have made the whole painting darker than intended. This second layer serves to work out some of the lighter and darker areas and adds more line structures. I do not and cannot add every line that I see in the reference photo. The goal is simply to set the scene for lighter and darker areas. Whenever there is a small area that would be hard to paint with a pencil, I can take some pigment directly off the pencil with a wet brush and apply it to the paper. In order to make the stem appear round, both sides need to be darkened. The area right under the flower is in the shade and therefore needs to be darkened as well. I'm using the darker green that I picked earlier to really make the color difference stand out. The transition from light to dark colors should be soft. I am creating the gradient on two sides and integrating the shadow in the process before everything dries can be challenging. In this moment, it is easier for me to add another layer later 
and concentrate on the soft gradients right now. It is always better to start with a lighter amount of pigment because taking color away is difficult. I feel like I was a little too careful with the second layer of the lighter purple. You can always add some more watercolor pencil to add color, contrast or structure. This is a very good demonstration of how fluid the painting process actually is. I still consider this in the realm of the second layer, as I only add to what I did just a minute ago. For the third layer, I'm switching to the darker purple watercolor pencil. With this layer, I can define details and add contrast. I activate the watercolor pencil with water and then I like to use a small brush with a pointy tip to drag the pigment out in small lines. I press harder with the pencil to make sure that some darker lines remain on the paper after I activated the watercolor pencil. In order to create some more precise lines, I sharpen the pencil a few times while painting. Taking pigment directly off of the pencil with a wet brush is a method I use a lot here because it's just faster. It allows me to work more precise in smaller areas and it makes it easier to layer watercolor pencil in case the paper has trouble accepting more layers. This can be the case if you work with really cheap paper or if it has barely any structure. In order to make the stem more realistic and give it more definition, the shadows on the sides and under the flower need to be darkened. I keep adding layers of darker pigment to the tulip to create more contrast and shadows. No matter how perfect the shape and lines are, without shadows the painting will just look flat. A very common mistake that people make is that they are too afraid with adding darker pigments. Darker pigments add contrast, so this is what you need to do to make your tulip really stand out. This contrast is easy to achieve with layering and maybe even adding a very different color. If your painting is mainly pinkish, try using a red pigment for the shadows. At this point in the painting process, I usually put my reference picture aside and look at the painting itself to decide which area needs more attention. The shadows and details in reference photos do not always make logical sense in paintings. Often you can make it easier for the viewer to make sense of a painting when you add details based on how you see the painting, rather than what you see in the reference photo. As a final detail, I add a fine blue line at the outer edge of each of the petals. These blue accents are really visible in the reference photo and will help the eye to tell the petals apart. The blue lines are on top of all previous layers of watercolor pencil and they look a little frizzled out and broken up. I will not activate them with water because this would blend the blue pigment and create soft lines, which is not what is needed here. It would also make the blue pop out, while I only want to create very subtle divisions. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I hope to see you soon with the next video.